and then once I'm done, I'll wipe on the high gloss polyurethane rub-on finish, and then, uh, hi. Transformers in the Rock on H Wood Shop? Let's find out. So maybe not Transformers, but I am repurposing a uh, entertainment center from Ethan Allen that was purchased, I don't know how long ago, but the client wants to repurpose it and upcycle it to a writing desk that has four drawers of storage, including a pencil drawer. So I thought it was a good idea, so I decided to take it on. If this is your first time here, I wanna welcome you. Please subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and help support the show by either visiting my Amazon store or Patreon. And you'll get rewards too, by the way. Now I spent a couple hours taking the entertainment center apart and the pieces that got damaged were pieces that I didn't need. So this was everything that I can physically use and I think it's gonna be plenty for the writing desk. Now the hardest part is going to be able to match the existing finish that's on here and spray on finish that can match the glossiness of what's already on here as well. <laughs> I've got some pitfalls, I've got some joinery that I've got to cover up because this thing was built to last. It had dados, stop dados, rabbits, uh, dovetails, all kinds of joinery that made this thing solid. And there were tons of hidden pocket screws that I had to find, which made it difficult sometimes to get it apart when I couldn't find them all. Um, but now that I got all this, I'm just gonna use the plan that you'll find on my website, or you might find a link right up here or down in the description. And uh, that way, if you have something that's similar that you want to turn into a writing desk, you can. But I'm also going to put in just a plywood layout of the pieces, so if you just want to make the desk itself without having to upcycle something, uh, you can do that as well. I'm going to start taking the sides, which are the biggest pieces, and start cutting it up for the uh, desktop as well as all of the end caps. Now because this is refurbished, there's a few things that I have to avoid and there is some joinery all around this thing that I need to lay out very carefully. So I went ahead and overcut it by an inch and I've turned it around and I'm gonna cut it to its final dimension and then I'll cut off the face frame and then the rabbit on the back and this should be a fairly flat piece. There might be some places here and there, but uh, overall I should be able to get it all out of the way. So now the drawer fronts are just gonna be made out of the remainder piece of that side. I've already trimmed off the rabbit, made sure there was no metal in there and now I'm gonna cut off the face frame and then cut the drawer fronts out of whatever's left over. I'm gonna have some dados right here that I'm gonna to have to contend with, so just some scrap pieces to fill them in is basically all I can do. The next side's gonna have quite a few pieces, so after removing all of the metal, I'm gonna free it up of the face frame and this rabbit on the back. As before, the dados I'm just gonna to have to work around. All right. There are the two small panels that will go on the very ends of the desk. Now I gotta cut the big panel. Now the right and left end cappers as well as the right side of the drawer cabinet are going to have a shaker style panel that is just a facade. It, it's not even a real panel. So it's a solid piece, like a 14 inch wide piece, and it's going to have a faux frame and uh, that will be glued upon it. It's just gonna have a couple of rails, couple of styles, I'll just go ahead and route out a uh, chamfer all the way around and it will just kind of give the resemblance of a shaker panel. But that will be sandwiched between the two legs on the end cappers and then glued to the uh, drawer cabinet as well. Now each drawer is going to have a center divider between each one, not to mention the two that are gonna be on the very, very bottom. This will just help uh, separate the drawer fronts so you won't see any gaps. Uh, it will add a little bit of structural integrity, but it's mainly meant just to hide the, the gaps between the drawers. All right, I'm on the last bit of things that I need to cut out of this entertainment center, and the legs are two and a quarter inches square. Unfortunately, I do not have anything on this entertainment center that's two and a quarter inches thick. So I'm gonna have to laminate a few pieces together. I've got the bottom of the entertainment center as well as a center divider that are both the same in dimension. Um, unfortunately though, after I cut the oversized pieces, it's only going to give me a little over uh, three legs. And unfortunately I need four. <laughs> so I've got some pieces right here that are a little under three quarters of an inch thick that hopefully should put me over the top. If not, I have just a few pieces left over here and then I've got some here uh, to maybe get me over that four leg mark uh, so that 
whenever I go to laminate them up and then cut them, they'll be perfect. Here's hoping. All right, good news. After cutting these up, what I did before I cut is I changed my overall measurement for the oversized measurement uh, by an eighth of an inch, and that saved me quite a bit over the course of both those boards. So uh, after putting these together, I have four legs, and the thickness this way, after I run them through the sander, will just be right at around two and a quarter, because I don't plan on taking much off. If anything, just to, um, rough up the finish is about all. And then uh, after I get them glued up and then trim them down, they'll be perfect. So luckily, yes, I was able to get all four legs. So I've got one more piece to cut out. So now I gotta go hunt and see what I can use to make that happen. The only thing left is the very back of the drawer cabinet. And it's in the plans, it's a half an inch. So this is about five eighths of an inch. I'll just run it through my sander and kind of trim it down to where it needs to be. Uh, but it is just enough to get that done. So I have successfully been able to cut out every single piece, except the drawers. I'm gonna make those out of plywood. Um, but I've managed to do every single piece out of that entertainment center to make this desk. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. That's, that's awesome. So here's a question for you. Have you done anything like an upcycling project like this? If so, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments below. And what kind of success did you have when you did it? Now I've taken a little bit of stock to find out exactly what I'm gonna have to do to these pieces because the next order of, bu of business is to fill in all of these dados and grooves that are cut into these pieces. Like I said, this piece of furniture was built pretty sturdy uh, and the joinery proves it. So I've got all these rails and styles that need filling. I've got um, one panel, all the drawer fronts and all the legs. There is a dado running in just about every one of those. So after many attempts of testing out the strips that I'm cutting on a piece of scrap oak, I finally got the size that I want and it fits just how I'd like it to in those grooves. Now I'm gonna have to reset this for the smaller grooves that are in the legs, but a majority, probably about 98% of these grooves that I'm filling are going to be the bigger ones. So now I have reset the fence and I'm making some test cuts to get just the right height that I need. And once I cut them to length, they're ready for glue. Now that all the grooves have been filled with the uh, pieces from the scraps, it's time to laminate them up. And I've already done three behind me down here on the floor. Um, so what I've done is the center piece, I've gone ahead and sanded the finish off of that so the glue will have something to stick to. Otherwise, the glue uh, tension will just be null and void and this thing will come apart. Uh, especially during milling, and that's not something you want. So the center piece has both sides that are pretty clean and ready for glue. Um, the outside pieces, I've left the finished side untouched, and then the other side does not have any finish on it whatsoever, just stained. Now I'm mainly using pocket holes on the construction of this desk, mainly because I had a limited supply of wood, and it's not exactly like I could have gone to my local hardwood dealer and say, I need some entertainment center wood. That's already pre-finished, please. So uh, instead of cutting over the amount that I needed to make room for integral tenons and things like that, I went ahead and just decided to do pocket screws and I'm hiding as much as I possibly can all of the holes. So I'm putting them in inconspicuous areas, whether it's inside of a cabinet box or uh, underneath the actual top. So um, the only place, only place that I am not putting uh, pocket holes are on the braces that will be seen from under the desk where your knee hole is at. So there's two braces back there where I don't want pocket holes on either side. I'm taking a little bit of time right now to make the face frames that are going to encase the faux panels. And uh, I've got the two small ones made. And right now I've got the big one to make that's going to be on the inside portion of the drawer cabinet box. 
With all the frames glued together, just comes time to run a chamfer all the way around. That'll have to be stained later along with the inside cuts. I'm also going to put the same chamfer on the top. Uh, since really nothing is going to be attached on the sides or the top, just underneath, uh, I can go ahead and do this before I attach it to the entire desk. When removing glue from a glue up, it's always handy to have a paint scraper. Just a cheapy paint scraper gets the job done really easily. You don't have to buy anything high dollar and it takes the glue off fairly fast. Little tip though, if you remember to do this, try and do the scraping whenever the glue is kind of congealed. Not wet, but not totally dry. Uh, it'll come off without a problem then. You just might have to clean it off, off of your scraper. Running the blanks for the legs through the table saw will square up and smooth out any rough edges that were left from the glue up and the glue itself. I also went ahead and cut them to final dimension, which are two and a quarter inches square. Using the crosscut sled, I can cut these to final dimension lengthwise, which is 29 and a quarter. Now I've gone ahead and done some pre-assembly and because these things have a finish on them already, I need something that's going to stick without having to sand it off. So I decided to use some Starbond uh, CA glue uh, which will kind of eat at that finish just a little bit, uh, causing that chemical reaction whenever it goes to adhere to the wood. Uh, so I've also reinforced it with some screws in the back just in case the glue fails over time. Uh, so now these things are pretty solid. So whenever I go to assemble these with the pocket screws, uh, it'll all be one piece later. I also took a little bit of time and uh, assembled the big face frame, which will go on the right hand side inside portion of the desk and then I put the face frame on that will be seen from the front. With the legs all sanded smooth it was time to taper the ends and it's a four sided taper down to one inch square on the very very bottom. To achieve this I use a scrap sheet of plywood about a half inch thick and taking some scraps from the entertainment center I use them as guide blocks so this thing can register in the same place each and every time. I just find the center of the leg itself, measure out a half inch from either side to leave me a one inch square uh, left over. Then I line up those lines on the jig and then push it through, rotating it a quarter of a turn each and every pass until I am left with a four sided taper that creates my tapered leg. All right, I'm gonna start doing the drawer box cavity assembly. This is the right hand panel with the faux frame and panel on the other side that'll be visible from the knee hole on the left. This is the back that's going to be attached to it. The back only has pocket screws on one side which are going to be screwed into the leg assembly on the left in the very, very back. I've got pocket screws right here that are going to attach this back because the back actually sits in the three quarter inch overhang that I have from the frame and panel setup. So all I've done here is taken some braces with pocket screws and some Starbond adhesive and I've put them two in the back, two in the front and there'll be two more here in the center. These up front will act as the drawer separators uh, while these right here will just provide stability as well as a place to screw to the top whenever it uh, gets put, put on. There is the drawer assembly. Uh, carcass. Next comes the furthest right hand panel that attaches to the legs that will uh, basically finish out the knee hole of the desk. This is the panel and it's got pocket screws on one side on, on uh, both edges. It will go face up and because it's going to be seen from both sides like I said earlier, the face frame will actually cover up the pocket screws whenever it's glued in place. Now the two braces that are going to be on the back side are going to be visible on all sides so I don't want any pocket screws seen. Uh, so I'm taking the Domino which I just purchased used, I'm the third owner actually. So uh, I put one here in the very bottom because that one's kind of narrow and then I got a larger one here on top that 
I can put two in. And I'm using the uh, five by 30 uh, millimeter dominoes. And I think they're gonna work just fine. Now after cutting several pieces at four inches wide and one and three quarter inches wide, I've already cut the pieces to final dimension for the drawer fronts and sides. Now I've gone to my dado stack and I've set the two outer blades together and adjusted the thickness to where I can cut both the tongue and the groove, or the dado rather, for the drawer front to the side. And I can do that with one setup of the fence and the blade. So I don't have to change anything. But I'll do a separate video on how I achieve this one setup process so you can employ it in your drawer making later. All right, drawer dry fit is perfect. Joints look good, no gaps, evenness all the way around, and the drawer doesn't rattle. Love it. Now, I do have to be honest, I did screw up the bottoms of these drawers just a little bit because whenever I made my SketchUp model, I made these drawers with three quarter inch thick material instead of half inch. So whenever I cut the bottoms, they were a full half inch shorter than what they needed to be. <laughs> so that was a surprising dry fit, <clears throat> but no biggie. I managed to just cut uh, four more drawer bottoms and I was back on track. Now, as far as the drawer slides go, I'm putting in 14 inch ball bearing drawer slides. These drawers are about 15 inches long and they don't make 15 inch slides, but I wanted to accommodate as much space as I possibly could for storage. And 15 and a quarter inches deep is as far as this desk will go. So 14 inches is all I can do, uh, but get full extension that way they pull out as far as they can. Uh, you don't ha really have to worry about left and right with these things. So that's one reason why I decided to go with these, that and they last a long, long time. Um, I'll go through a separate video whenever I talk about how to make drawers the easy way and uh, I'll talk about how to install drawer slides because I know that there's plenty of you guys out there that have trouble installing these accurately. So the way I'm going to attach the top is using figure eights. This will allow for wood movement over time because if you make the mortise for the figure eight wide enough, it will allow it to shift back and forth. Now, if you want to purchase some of these, you can find them in my Amazon store. I'll leave a link down below. Now, to attach the top, you've seen that I just uh, clamped everything down to make sure that it doesn't move. And those figure eights just stick out enough to get a screw in. The clamps will just help keep it in place while I screw it down. So I'm super excited. After running to Lowe's, I found the stain color that I'm looking for. And it looks like it's the Minwax Honey 272. There are variations of color all over this desk and this one is the closest that I can find after trying upwards of around 10 different colors, including mixtures. Uh, so I'm gonna take this stain color, which my client is understanding of, by the way, and rub on everywhere that there is uh, bare wood from the cutoffs that I had to do. And uh, once I applied the high gloss polyurethane rub on finish, I'm calling it good. I'm gonna attach the drawer fronts and be finished. So hopefully we can wrap this project up.
And just like that, she is now ready for delivery. I am super pleased with how this looks. It just goes to show that you can take a beautiful piece of furniture that you may not have a use for anymore and turn it into something that you can have a use for. Uh, so keeping the original finish I think turned out great. I even went as far as to take some of the original brass pieces that were on the unit itself and incorporate them back into the piece because I'm sure the clients want to keep that little nostalgic feel because they fell in love with that piece when they bought it. So having all of this original stuff back on that will keep that nostalgic feel. So this is going for delivery and by the time you guys see this, uh, they will already have it. So guys, thank you very much for joining me on this episode. I want to thank the brand new partners that have joined down below. All the new patrons that have joined up above, we want to thank you guys very much for helping to support the show. We couldn't do it without you. Don't forget my build videos and sketch up videos that you see right over here. And that will just about do it for me. So take care, guys. Be safe. Boom!